Welcome to Medicine in Nutshell's Guide to Cardiovascular Examination. Gain consent and take a thorough cardiovascular history. Fran is a healthy 23-year-old man with no comorbidities, so I'll run through the examination as I would as a routine. However, when you're in an OSCO or in clinical practice, you want to use your examination to confirm or refute a diagnosis. So, to gain the most out of your examination, you need to think of a few key things. 1. What is the differential diagnosis? 2. What are the clinical signs that you're looking for? 3. What are the complications of the disease? And what are the complications of the treatment of the disease that you can look for in examination? To demonstrate you understand the process of your examination, it's often wise to state what you are doing, what you expect to find, and then what you have found. This approach shows you're a thinker, rather than just repeating a list of conditions and signs which you've learned and aren't related to the case. A good examination is systematic and follows the steps of inspection, palpation and auscultation. Position the patient comfortably, lying in bed at 45 degrees. Look around the bed space for items to note, such as oxygen or GTN spray. Consider a chaperone as you expose the chest. On general inspection, look for colour and comfort, as well as tachypnea and cyanosis. Ask the patient for their hands, inspect the palmer and dorsal aspect of the hands, as well as the nails. You are looking for the stigmata of cardiovascular disease. Link this to your history. For example, if the patient is a smoker, say you're looking for tar staining. Feel the hands for temperature and see if they're sweating. Now check peripheral capillary refill time. Hold the finger pulp for five seconds and then release. Check for clubbing. Assess the radial pulse for rate, rhythm and character. Here you can assess for radial radial delay if you feel there's clinical suspicion. Now palpate the brachial pulse. Here is a good opportunity to take a manual blood pressure. Moving up to the neck, assess for the JVP. This will be between the two heads of the sternocleidomastoid. Assess for anemia, jaundice and xanthalasma. Assess for characteristic facies and then look in the mouth for central cyanosis, the dental hygiene and signs of gingivitis. Chest inspection. Look for surgical scars, visible pacemakers or implanted ICDs. Think which cardiovascular drugs the patient is taking. Do any of these have side effects you can see clinically? such as amiodarone, spironolactone, or warfarin. Can you see grey skin, gynecomastia, or bruising? Palpation. Palpate the apex beat. This should be located in the fifth intercostal space on the left mid-clavicular line. Note the character. Now palpate over the four valvular areas for thrills. Palpate the carotid pulses feeling for rate, rhythm and character. Auscultation. Here it pays to take your time. Be thorough and listen to each area carefully. Start in the mitral area where you located the apex beat as this is where the heart sounds should be heard at their loudest. Palpate the carotid pulse. Heart sound 1 coincides with the pulse. Then listen for heart sounds 2, 3 and 4. Can you hear silence between S1 and S2? Is there a murmur? If you hear a murmur, where is it heard loudest? And where does it radiate? Right-sided murmurs are heard loudest on inspiration and left-sided murmurs are heard loudest on expiration. For mitral valve pathology, Listen with the bell of the cystoscope over the mitral area and then listen for radiation in the axilla. For aortic regurgitation, ask the patient to sit forwards and listen over the left sternal edge for the mid diastolic murmur of aortic regurgitation. It is heard best if you ask the patient to take a deep breath in 
and out and then hold it. If heard, assess for a collapsing pulse. Auscultate the carotid arteries, listening for bruise and radiation of aortic stenosis. Now, auscultate the lung bases, listening for fine crepitations of heart failure. Examine the legs for dependent edema caused by heart failure or potentially a side effect of calcium channel blockers. Thank the patient for their time and allow them to get dressed. Now is the time to present your case. To see how to present this case, please see our video titled How to Present a Cardiovascular History. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe to our channel.